Welcome back uh, to Tough Talk and tonight we are looking at the status of Kenyan Muslims in politics and we are privileged to be hosting our presidential candidate Abduba Dida. Brother Abduba Dida, you are telling us that it is possible for Kenyan Muslims to rally under the banner of Islam. How possible is it when we are talking about an Islam in Kenya which has different sects, it has different communities inside the same Islam, and it has different leanings. How possible is it? Millions went for pilgrimage. I could see a European, an African, uh, an Australian, an Arab, the elderly, the youngsters, the unwell, the healthy, and some were engaged in sleeping, others were engaged in reading Quran, others were engaged in praying, others were engaged in tawaf. And then an old man came and just said one thing. Qad qamati salah. Very old. Qad qamati salah. Oh, even those who don't un understand Arabic, in seconds, the whole gathering took shape. Those who were doing tawaf and those who were in Hijri Ismail cleared. Yeah? If one word can unite millions in a second, why not Islam and the whole practice? Let me be the devil's advocate on this one and uh, ask. Most of the people have uh, had the thinking that, you know, politics has nothing to do the, with religion and uh, that we need separation of religion with politics. You know, the, the, there's the concept of separation of the state and religion. And uh, some Muslims, unfortunately, they're advocating for this kind of thinking, not knowing the consequences that may arise from that. What are your thoughts on this? I'm sorry, but those are sick Muslims. I'm very sorry to say that. My role model is Muhammad bin Abdullah, the Prophet. I see him a student, a student, and he's there in class taking lessons from Jibril. Immediately, I see him a teacher, and the companions are there taking instructions from him as a teacher. He goes home, and he's a father and a dear husband. Yeah? Aisha. The Prophet ﷺ said, when Aisha is angry, annoyed, I know, she will swear by Ibrahim. Mm -hmm. yeah? She even doesn't want to recognize his prophecy and all that. And uh, he is uh, a leader. Uh, I call it leadership. I don't call it politics. The first drafted, written, political constitution was drafted by Muhammad Sallallahu that brought together Jews and Allah clearly told him their position. Christians, Muslim immigrants, the Ansar who were there, who welcomed the immigrants, and then we had the traditionalists who were neither Muslims nor Jews or, or Christians. And uh, there were those who pretended to be everything, you know, the hypocrites. So he contained all of them. This town belongs to us. Yeah, in case of a calamity, then it will befall us. How do we handle security? How do we handle uh, something that happens? So bringing the people together, whether they understand what you mean or they don't understand, is leadership and that was clear yeah so they they say that that politics is not our business because of little understanding of Islam Islam is a complete lifestyle and leadership is is required at personal at personal level you're a leader yeah uh, at family level the husband is is the leader at tribal level we have leaders at mosque level, we have leaders. At this station, we have a leader. Yeah? At uh, a country level, we have a leader. And as a generation living in this era, we have a leader. 
and that is that that's the world so what we are supposed to do is god mentions all ku anfusakum ahlikum wa andir ashiratakal akhrabin um alqura wa town wa man hawlaha the neighboring wa ja'alnakum shu'uban your country wa ma arsalnaka illa rahmatan lil alamin rasulullah was was in makka in madina but he had he was he was he knew he's a leader a, a universal international allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes us and he says kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat lin nas allah is rabbun nas whether you accept him or whether you worship a cow that's the matter that's your understanding but he says i'm your god accept it or not i am rabbun nas the quran is hudal lin nas an universal book rasulullah is kafatan lin nas and you salim myself and anybody whether you accept it or not is a universal leader kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat lin nas ibn kathir says ukhrijat min butuni ummahatikum you left the wombs of your mother to serve humanity and that's, that's leadership that's leadership so whichever level you accept whichever level you accept whichever level god will give you to understand the whole world waits for you on assumption that uh, we are to use uh, Islam as a platform to politics, an argument has been raised that, uh, well, it will become more divisive than more uniting. For example, if we are to open up our mosques for all the political aspirants to come and share their political vision with the ummah, people say that it ends up dividing the community more. Do you ascribe to this kind of thinking? The function of the mosque is not what we do. There's a friend of mine who did his PhD thesis, uh, function of the mosque from a hadith perspective. And he collected a research of 1,050 pages. Mm -hmm. I asked him, Dr. Ari, in relation to what your findings and how our mosques are working, mm -hmm. what do you tell us? He says they are not working even 0 0.1. When it comes to Islam and Islamic leadership, the youngsters should respect the elders. And the elders should show a mercy upon the youngsters. And the leaders should be role models. If I am interested in any position, I should present to the leaders or those in management my interest. And then we should sit. They should look at whatever we have to present. Yeah? And then come with one person. Why should all of us crumble? 14 graduates chasing an MCA position? That is not Islam. What they are saying is, currently how politics is done and how it is still managed and how candidates are picked and how bribing is happening, that is not Islam. And nobody will support that. But when it comes to Islamic teachings in relation to leadership and governance, it is the best. And whether people will embrace it today or whether they want to continue being in their funny ways, a time will come. And the only thing that will save the world and save Kenya and save any county is Islam and leadership. Are your comments a vindication of ourselves as a community that we have not been Muslim enough? Because I hear you saying that, look, instead of 14 people chasing for one position, why can't we go the Islamic way whereby they all for their candidacy to the community and the community based on the principles of Islam which are very open will come up with a single candidate which even if we are to use this mode of election for that matter if I may call it we would even save the country a lot of money from the elections that we go to are you saying that this is a vindication of ourselves as a community that we are not Muslim enough uh, a detailed explanation about that is in my lecture entitled the six categories of human beings the six categories of human beings you are either a mu'min or a kafir or a kafir or a kafir or a kafir four you know when we talk of it, allah says inna ladina kafaru you just think that oh these are the germans or oh, very far people Four categories of non-believers, two are in the mosques. Two are in the first line of the mosques. Two could be graduates from Medina University, Umma University, and all this. Two. Two are outside. And one group are referred to as the hypocrites. 
A hypocrite, according to my understanding, is a person who cannot balance three. What he believes inside, what he says by speech, and what he practices or she practices. If the three con reconcile, you are a mu'min. And in line with what Allah and his prophet want. If two are okay and the practice, you say God is God, and you say God is God, Allahu Akbar takbir, and you give a bribe. Giving a bribe is an action that is not acceptable by Islam. Then you're a, you're a hypocrite. You're, 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 you're a hypocrite. So, I, <laughs> who is a Muslim? Who is a Muslim? Good yeah. question. Is a good, who is a Muslim? And are they there today? I doubt. A time will, a time, Rasulullah the Prophet said, a time will come when your mosques will be many, when your number will be a lot, when your scholars and those who memorize the Quran will be wrong. But before Allah, you are rubbish, you are worthless, you are useless. And he compared this, when it rains and the water flows, yeah, with that force, whatever rubbish they collect that floats, just like that. Why? the tree will not go hand in hand. Uh, in our responses that we received from some of our viewers, one of them was questioning uh, why does the labeling come in when only it concerns uh, politics? You know, why do we get to label each other a kafir, a, a hypocrite, a this, when it comes to politics? And they'd like to know, would they still, you know, be within their rights as Muslims if they just sat at home practiced their Islam quietly, went around doing their day-to-day -day businesses, and where life would be comfortable for them. Why is it that when it only comes to politics, then the dynamics change? Well, you can choose to sit in your house, and the Prophet ﷺ said there are two categories of believers, the weak and the strong. The weak and the strong. Nothing comes on a silver plate. Kama utaki kusukumana, sukumana, you don't want to, to be patient enough, you don't want to be smart enough, you don't want to move your ideas. And nobody calls another a kafir when it comes to politics. In anything that you do, in anything that you do, if what you believe in, and what you say, and what you practice contradict then there's a question mark well allah says in the quran wa min an-nasi man yaqulu amanna billahi wa bil yawm al-akhir there are those who claim me there are those who claim meeting to meet me there are those who claim they are my my family members wa ma hum bi we are not we are not rejecting it is not me it is not you it is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then he mentions a category of people who Allah says are sick are sick now the sickness that they have inside them now will cause three groups of Muslims to come you know if you are in a kanzu if you have big beards if you go for Hajj 15 times <laughs> every year you know you can go every month uh, but inside are three problems. They are inside of a problem. Now the problem, the inside problems are categorized into two. Maradu shahwa and maradu shuhuba. There is the sickness caused by like, liking desires, following your desires. And there is a sickness that is caused by doubt. Have you seen a Muslim inside the masjid telling another person, don't waste the slaughtering of the animals during Udhiyah. Why do you waste animals? Why do you waste? He has doubted Udhiyah. He has doubted Udhiyah. You see a Muslim praying and he will tell another one, what is the difference between Islam and Christianity? What, what do you mean? They worship Jesus and you worship a stone in Mecca. He has doubted a pillar of Islam. He has doubted a pillar. There is a Muslim who will pray, but he will never perform wudu. Because he says, I've just from the bathroom. What, what is the essence? When you doubt a commandment of Allah, then you are sick 
and your sickness will take you out of the bounds of Islam. And the other type of, of sickness is desires. There are those who know the Quran, the words of Allah. You read one letter, you are blessed. They know, you, they know this. Ha, ya in, ya out. Do you know the Quran? No. Do you know Arabic? No. Why? My shop. So as much as he has no problem with Allah and his prophet and the Quran, he cannot balance the shop and what Allah wants. Then there are those who will go after their desires to an extent that Allah says, Afara'ayta man ittakhada ilahahu hawa. Imagine of those who worship their desires. If you tell them, I will give you hundred dollars, kill Salim, they will kill you and continue with Salatul Maghrib. Well, uh, we need to take a break and uh, viewers, you are watching Tough Talk and tonight we are hosting brother and our brother who's also a presidential aspirant, brother Abdu Badida, and we are discussing the status of Kenyan Muslims in politics. We are taking a break and when we will be back, we'll be going a little bit personal and getting to know who is Abdu Badida.